What bands did you listen to? And oh, I mean, Backstreet Boys, In Sync, that kind of thing. Like, which one did stuff. you like better? Because back then it was like Team In Sync or Team. Backstreet oh, I was Boys. definitely Team BSB. Ah, oh, me Post too. Show, yeah, guys. people are like, oh, In Sync was cool. I was like, not really, because all they had was JT. Yeah, like, they were nothing without him. And the Backstreet Boys had way better songs. And I went to their Millennium tour. Uh, concert no. here and i literally almost fell off the belt because we had balcony seats i fell off the belt almost fell off the balcony trying to touch aj because they like went on these wire and then flipped towards me i was like oh my god my mom's like get down here <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it was funny but i did touch his shirt oh wow yeah just a little bit and you haven't washed the hands since yeah no i haven't nice, nice. it smelled right like hands. aj in here yeah. i thought it was okay like was like like uh 25 years ago aj Oh yeah, it's like the, the fresh <laughs> prime AJ. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just use a lot of hand sanitizer on his hands. Okay, that's fair. I mean, I would do it's the same enough, thing, right? If I touched AJ, I would not wash that part. I would preserve yeah. it. Like uh, speaking of preserving, I just went to the <laughs> Petrified <laughs> Forest National Park. Oh, that's I I saw the pictures. Yeah, a gem of a place. I would definitely recommend going. It looks going. beautiful. I've always wanted to go there. It's yeah, it's wonderful. Two hundred twenty million years old. All the trees. Wow, yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah. Also saw AJ there too. Oh, you did? Yeah. I was like, well, there would. And he was like, well, I want it that way. And he pointed to the rock. I and want I was it like, that oh, way. Oh, man. You like, are oh, my man. fire. Oh. You're still doing the puns. Yeah. Still, uh, still heavy at it. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. I'll do back. Rock your face. body. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody. Uh, rock. rock. Your body, body right. right. Back streets back. back. All right. <laughs> oh my God. And what a wonderful way to intro us into yeah. a comedy advice that podcast. Good. That was great. Wonderful. Hello. I am your host, Stefan Satani. It's not Stefan, it's Stefan. I don't know why I tried to give myself a little more class. Oh I just, uh, yeah, I know. We're talking about the Backstreet Boys and I think, and Scary and Posh Spice. So yeah. maybe I need some sort of moniker to be a little cooler. Yeah, you got to hype it up a bit. Maybe I can be on the spice rack alongside yeah. the Spice Girls. Yeah. Maybe I could be like a coriander. Hello, Ooh. my name's Coriander Satani. <laughs> nope, that sounds... <laughs> coriander. <laughs> Cori... <laughs> oh, it's it Cori funny. for short, but Coriander is the full coriander. name. Coriander. Maybe that's what Cori is short for. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not, though. I think so. I think that sounds pretty logical to me. I would say so. And Pap is short for paprika, so when you get oh, those... Wow. Pap smears. Okay. Sprinkle okay, a little what's up, Paps? <laughs> like, no, don't call me that. And the wonderful <laughs> voice alongside me, or the wonderful person alongside me, if you're watching on YouTube, is none other than Lexi D. Marie. Woo -woo! Uh, Lexi, honor. Thank you for having you me. Oh. I'm so excited. This is my second time, so I'm happy to finally meet you in person. I know this is the what. What is the difference between seeing me just torso up versus full person? It's exactly as exactly. I pictured it. Okay, okay. You were a little shorter than I imagined. Yeah. Yes. I don't know why, but I imagine you'd be. You're like, wow, you're kind of short. I, I answered leprechaun. the door and was like, "Hello, where are where?" No, where, oh, not. there, there you are. What? You're like five six, five seven. I'm five four. Five four. Wow. That's like a meter and a half. That's crazy. You know, just barely tall enough to not have to sit in a car seat. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I didn't know if I needed a potty training potty for yeah. you as well. But looks like yeah. we don't have to worry about it because you came prepared. No, you didn't I'm have to. Ready to go, man. Oh, that's awesome. And ready to go you are in life in general because yeah. you've been accomplishing a lot. You won you. AZ's Best Woman Comic of 2020. Tell me a yeah. little bit about that. I was pretty surprised because um, there's a lot of really great female comedians here yes. in Arizona, and some I would definitely say are better than me. But I'm also, you know, very humble, and I'm very appreciative that I got it. I thought it was pretty awesome. Oh, that is I got very a little cool. trophy and everything. That's what does the trophy look like? It's just like probably like five inches, and it's like a like, like a five golden, foot four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like 5.4 inches <laughs> and it has like this circle like medallion looking thing and it says phoenix arizona's com or phoenix arizona comedy's best female comedian Damn. of the year and then it has my name on it 
that where have you placed it since then? Where is uh, it? It's on my dresser. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you get to see it every day. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I wouldn't really like put it out on the coffee table per se, just because that's just like a bit much. Oh, well, that's, yeah, that's fair. Dresser is the appropriate place yeah. to put it. I like yeah. that. I think I would probably put it right in front of me on the toilet, like on the toilet oh, lid. Oh, yeah. So that way. Sit and reflect. Yes, yes. Or stand and reflect. If I put it on yeah. the lid and I'm standing <laughs> sit there. Sit or stand, whichever you prefer. <laughs> which, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But that's yeah. super cool. And how long have you yeah. been doing comedy? Um, I've been doing it three years now. Trey Sanos. Yes, Trey Sanos. Wow. As they say in Spanish. Yeah. As uh I'm not Spanish at all, Me as either. you might tell. Yeah, definitely. I actually I'm a bit confused that you said you're not because because I like look a, very look like Spanish. a Spanish stallion. I think I may, <laughs> you know, I think I could be like a Barcelonian mayor. Yeah. Or stallion. Because some of them do look Caucasian. That is true. Yes. And they've got that. I don't know what color eyes I have. I think they're they look blue like a to me. sea green. Blue. They look blue from here, but I also don't have the best eyesight, as you can tell. Okay. My glasses. You're, you know what? Your eyes actually almost look purple because mm. the purple hair makes it all reflect so wonderfully. <laughs> That's like, cool. Maybe like I a, should get some purple contacts. That would like be like some lavender ones since my my hair is dark purple. Oh my if they were scented too that would be even better. <laughs> Let off like a lavender scent so I'm just relaxing everyone. Could we be I coriander go. and lavender? Yes. Oh, Cori coriander and lav. Yeah, core lav. What's Cor up? <laughs> So you've been doing comedy for three years. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to jump into that comedy pool? Because the water's cold. I'll tell you yeah, what. Yeah. Yeah. It's a hard uh, thing to start. Uh, a lot of people just kind of wait for the moment to feel sure. okay enough to, to do it. But, um, you know, I just, my mom, I went through a divorce and then I uh, had a chronic illness I got diagnosed with right after that. Dang. And I was just kind of like downward spiral. Not that bad, but I was just looking for something to inspire me. And um, and my mom suggested comedy. And I was like, huh. Dang. Why did yeah. she do? Were you always a funny kid? Did yeah. you make her laugh a lot? Yeah. Like I was always the kid that was making everyone laugh or just like doing outrageous things in public. And I was making YouTube videos, not like posting them, but before YouTube was even a thing, you know. Dang. Kind of thing. Like just making... doing like my friends would record me and I would just do crazy stuff. Do you have any of those archived somewhere? Are I, they are they in the dresser below the trophy? No, I've lost almost all of them except for there's a few videos that I have on some random YouTube channel. Um, if you can find them, oh, but man. it's me and my friends, and we made a few videos. Actually, now that I think about it, I do have a DVD that we made that was like a legit like skit comedy. It was oh my! How old funny. were you? I was. 16 i think okay I it. okay what was it what was it about um it was basically like a horror comedy film where uh there was freddy krueger but we named it something different i can't remember the name but he had like tampons taped to his fingers <laughs> <laughs> and he would shoot the tampons at us you know and, and we would like run from him and we filmed it like in in my friend's apartment and around his apartment complex and we yeah. he did makeup and stuff so we like did like it was pretty uh high quality i think for uh 16 year olds Dang, that's and it the, did get launched to YouTube or is it just yeah, sitting so uh, well no that one is on a DVD, okay. but I have a few on YouTube. All right, link in the show notes to be able to buy that DVD listeners. Yeah. Get on that. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm gonna need to make some copies. Oh, so cool. And so <laughs> are you still recording sketches or doing sketches or are you just designating yourself to stand up comedy? Well, I've just been doing like through the pandemic, we didn't really get to perform that much because a lot of things, a lot of comedy clubs were shut down. So I dedicated myself to uh, writing and really disciplining myself on planning out my own podcast to be successful because you don't want to like just get on there and be like, what's up and talk all this stupid stuff or like pop culture is super easy. Like I right, wanted to do right. something that would like teach people stuff, but also be funny and have like guests on. So I planned all that out, found an artist to do my logo. Nice. I made a, a intro rap. 
oh, song my God. that I'm going to have. I'm actually about to record it at, at this weekend. So that should be cool. It has a really cool beat too. I felt I felt like a real rapper. Like I went on YouTube, I found my beat, I purchased it. I have like a whole agreement with them and everything. Yo, and you could be like, it. you could be like Lil Nas X. Yeah, because he Lil bought Nas. the beats for. I can't remember the song "Old Town Road." Off it, YouTube. Yeah, a lot of rappers do that. Like Cardi B does. I know the Migos have. Yeah, I know. The baby has like a bunch of rap because that's the that's the easiest way first off to have the most because there's so many channels that just like produce beats and you just message them and you're like is this available mm -hmm. how much is it they can send you the agreement and then you just basically buy it so that's it was pretty cool how how lengthy is the rap is are there multiple verses is there a chorus is there well a... that's what i'm trying to determine now because i have about a minute and a half written wow but um <laughs> wow really a minute and a half i was just thinking for an intro like well, 15 seconds yeah but... no i i probably will shorten it and okay. maybe maybe do like half of it at the beginning and the yeah. other half at the end Nice. Or maybe like freestyle the end, like to kind of make a rap each week on what the next week is going to be out. I think about. It, would, it would be cool if you just rapped the whole time. I think yeah. that might be. I just played the beat. I don't need to record it. I just every episode I'll do the intro. I think, well, you could record out. the intro and the outro, but then in between you're like, hey guys, my name's Lexi yeah, and I'm up. a little bit flexy. Yeah. And then you just keep going that I ran out of Lexi rhymes, but you know, it's you okay. could find another one. <laughs> And uh, yeah. yeah, so I had a lot of fun doing that. So I worked a lot on planning out my podcast and now I'm in the final stages of recording. And then I also obviously did some shows, but then I joined a comedy skit group because you asked if I um, yes. have done any videos. So I joined like a YouTube comedy skit group and it's called Night School and there's it's going to be a five episode series. Nice. And it's basically just about like students who didn't graduate high school but they go to night school to get their diplomas and we're all different like stereotypical okay. uh characters in high school and i play the geek okay. uh, gertrude okay. anderson and i have like a speech impediment and this whole like weird <laughs> outfit thing and i have this creepy like porcelain doll i use as like my emotional crutch through class and it's really funny that's wonderful. How do what did you do to uh, for the apparel and the the aesthetics to look nerdy? Um, I kind of went with like Steve Urkel's sisters look, like the girl, like the girl oh, okay. who wears like the button up shirts with suspenders and like the plaid okay like, skirts and the high knee nice. like socks. And yeah. I had my hair in high pigtails with little like ribbons in it. It was funny. Nice. Nice. And when is that coming out? Um, it should be coming out, I would say, in July, probably. Okay. Because we're actually not done filming it yet. We just we're about to do the fourth episode. So Who's all involved? Anyone? Um, there's there's uh Belly B. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. him. He's a comedian. Um, and then Drake. He's oh yeah, I've, I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah he's Drake, a really good singer and the, rapper. Yeah, and then Chili. I don't know if you know Chili. She like does hair, and she's an artist. No, I'm not familiar with Chili. Um, yeah, just so, the restaurant. Sounds like a <laughs> lot of famous entities, though. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of really cool people. So we're really excited, and I'm excited because there's an episode where we have like a talent show, and I perform because I'm like the geek, and you know everybody else is like super like cool and like gangster and i'm just like this weird girl with this porcelain doll so i perform uh <laughs> true colors by cindy lopper and i have like the whole outfit i even oh. got like the wig from uh the <laughs> the uh music video and i go all out and it's pretty awesome it's hilarious that is amazing i cannot wait to see it where can people find it what's it out once it's out is it gonna be on youtube yeah or? it's gonna be on youtube on um edison films as okay the channel so Very yeah nice. so that'll be cool and then i've also written quite a few of my own skits that i want to start recording and then releasing those like in between my weekly podcasts that i'm going to be doing which i hopefully will have as like video and audio oh nice nice and the name of the podcast laughing with lexi yes 
That's right. Okay. Beautiful name. Wonderful name. Alliteration. It's just, you, know, you can't go wrong with there. Thank you. Nice. So yeah, that's all the mouthful of things that I've been up to. That's pretty amazing. That's a lot of stuff, <laughs> especially for a pandemic. Usually people are like, uh, well, I gained 15 pounds. So. Yeah, which I did as well. Um, but, you know, you did that's not. Fine. I There's really no I way. honestly did. Oh, my gosh. Well, it, di- it just distributed well. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it spread the wealth, unlike yeah. uh, this country. All but throughout, yeah. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, we're about to get into some really hearty advice. Right. I, I don't know if you remember this from last time, but um, actually a segment that I kind of cut out from the last time you were there, or here, was celeb impressions. Have you brushed up? I can't remember what celebrity impression you did last time. Um, the last time I did a few. I did um, the grandma on Nutty Professor. <laughs> oh, yes. And then I did... Um, who else did I do? Cher. That's right. Um, I did. Jeez, that was a while ago. It's hard to remember. I did a few other ones. You did. Oh, I did um Fran or not Fran, uh Lois from Family Guy. That's right. And we went off on a Family Guy tangent. Yeah. We That's made right. up we tried to like make up our own song, I think. That's right. Didn't we? That's right. Yes. We're we like, did. we should make a band. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, we uh, do you have any new ones that you'd like to try out? Because I really don't, honestly. Okay. But that's one thing I do want to start working on more is focusing more on because I have a I I'm super OCD on being like organized, and I use this app where I write down like all my jokes and all my mm-hmm. ideas for everything. And I have one to start working on my impressions. I made a list, oh. but I just haven't. I've been so busy with everything else that I just talked about. <laughs> so, Jeez. How do you balance it all with, I'm sure you have a day job as well? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, I'm a licensed property claims adjuster, so I do catastrophe claims, um, but I work from home. What defines a catastrophe? Um, that's like tornadoes, hurricanes, oh, earthquakes. Okay. okay. Anything that's not just like a storm. You okay. know what I mean? Gotcha. gotcha. I mean, so- they are storms, but not like. I like bad storms. Yeah, okay. not they're like, they're like the scary storms. Not her boobs. Not like posh. Okay, yeah. got it. Nothing got it. posh. <laughs> got it. So, <laughs> so it's all out of state, I think. Yeah, because most Arizona of them. doesn't really have. Yeah, most of them are. Only every once in a while, there'll be like her boobs that <laughs> that are bad <laughs> enough on the outsides of Arizona where they will have like trees, the winds are higher and the trees will fall over onto the houses. So all you homeowners out there, I would say anywhere in Arizona, you probably shouldn't uh, have trees too close to your house because that's true. Cacti, probably even worse. Yeah. It's like a prickly tree. Yeah. hmm, It's like a porcupine tree. Yeah. But most of, most of them are out of state. A lot of them are, um, that we handle is hurricanes and earthquakes. Quakes. That sounds very depressing. I'm glad you have yeah. your passion projects of lifting yourself up because yeah. I can't imagine calling people and being like, so you're homeless now because the hurricane took out yeah. your house. Yeah. And I'm a specialist too. So I do all the denial letters. <laughs> so oh. I'm the person who like calls you and tells you like, sorry, you know, you're going through this and you know, your house is just kind of destroyed. Unfortunately, because of the lo- the lack of coverage that you signed oh. up for, it's not going to be able to be covered. But but I'm really good at it because I'm a nice person. Yeah. And then also, I for each of those states, there's other options that you can go through the state for coverages where you lack okay. coverage. So I take the extra step to find those resources for these people. So I'm not just like calling them with a middle finger in their face. I see. I'm like, there's other options, even though we can't cover you because you didn't sign up for this kind of coverage. These are the other options you have. So So they're usually really nice. Middle finger to peace sign. You just pivot real quick. Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, very All helpful. Right. And they're like, well, you're nice, so I'm not going to like cuss you out or anything. Are you really good at breakups then? Yeah. Telling people, okay. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm really sorry it's not working <laughs> out. Here are a couple other options. Here's some other options. You know, <laughs> Becky's really, really been into you lately. I've already installed Bumble on your phone, so you yeah, can go check so that out. So there you go. P- profile's built. Wonderful. 
That's amazing. So we're going to get started with an inspirational quote. Okay. And I've got one here, but before I give mine, I like mm -hmm. to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes. So I remember you already gave one on the last time, and I can't remember what it was. I have a horrible memory. I can't remember yeah. the Spice Girls, and I can't remember my past episodes. They just mm -hmm. go in and out. It's like a like a deep, long tunnel. You know what? Sometimes I wake up screaming, remembering episode 165 with Lexi DeMarie. And I was like, oh, my God, she did the lowest impression. Oh, she did the lowest impression. That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure the one that I did the last time was was the um, the one with Will Ferrell the, that he did at the commencement speech at oh. uh, like USC or some college. Some if you're college. not first, you're last. Right. Yeah. Shake and bake. Okay. Yeah. What no. what did he say though? I can't he remember. said something like, um, you'll never know you'll never know um how it feels to Sounds like an emo <laughs> song. You'll never know how it feels to fuck. Wow. I can't make it on my own. I can't make it on my own. Oh my god. Shout no. out to whatever band that Hawthorne was. Hawthorne Heights. Hawthorne Heights. Ohio's yeah. for lovers. Yeah. Okay, yes. I cut my wrist and bite my arm. <laughs> I always thought that part was so funny. Because <laughs> like just imagining someone cutting their wrist and biting their arm. I for, I didn't even understand that last lyric. I didn't know yeah. what it was. I was like, cut my wrist and da, da, da. So yeah. now it's good cut to know. Cut my wrist and bite and my arm. Bite my arm. That's pretty aggressive. That's zombie level. Yeah. They were very depressed, clearly. <laughs> I hope they got the help they needed. Yeah. Because I haven't heard from them. I don't know what they're doing now. Yeah, I think they all just hopefully they're not down the Chester hole like a uh, Chester from. Oh, oh, old Chesty. Yeah. yeah. It seems Poor like guy. a lot of uh, people that are in alternative rock bands or like emo bands just like get really depressed. I mean, it makes sense. They're, they're cry. They are literally sending cries for help in their songs. Yeah. So they really are. So yeah, so I guess going back to what I was saying. <laughs> Moving <laughs> what on. We were saying, yeah, well, was... I digress. <laughs> um, it was it was a quote from that from that commencement speech, and he said, "You'll never know uh, the true meaning of accomplishment and unless you've been able to give beyond yourself, or something like that." Basically, saying you're you're not going to know like the fulfillment of you know, accomplishing things unless you've been able to give beyond yourself and be selfless and do things for other people. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's really nice. And it's something I remember. My That's my favorite quote. It's a good one. It is a yeah. good one. I remember when I was 21 years old, 21st birthday, I was in Italy. And I remember I was with my relatives and they, they went to mass. So I went with them. And I remember the priest, he said, uh, nessuno viene a questo mondo per se stesso, which wow. means... I don't know. I don't speak Italian. No, it means nobody comes to this world just for themselves. Yeah. And so there's a deep meaning there where sometimes, and I know it's important to charge your own battery. What is it the phrase now? It's like put on your mask before you put on somebody else's mask. And yeah. I think that there sometimes there is a time for that, but there's also a time to recognize and remember that there are people around you and your actions. Yeah, you have to find a balance. It's not just, I mean, it is your life and you do have to do things for yourself and be your biggest advocate, but that doesn't mean you can't and shouldn't help other people along the way because if you have the capacity to do so, whether it's, you know, just stopping and talking to someone or helping right. them with something or including people and in things once you've accomplished something and you have the opportunity to bring other people into it, you should always try to do the most that you can for other people without having to sacrifice too much of yourself. Holy fuck. The Miss America award goes to Lexi DeMarie. That was beautiful. Oh my <laughs> God. I'm glad that came out well. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. All right. Well, beautiful quote, beautiful sayings i feel like i might have to cut that out because i was almost too inspirational so we'll wow try and... we don't want to discourage people with <laughs> the amount of inspiration we instilled <laughs> yeah whoa 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 so i have a quote you know what this will this will calibrate this is actually by a robot called inspirebot you know the deal but for oh, those yeah. of you that don't it uses ai to take the wisest words known to man or woo man and just mash mm -hmm. them together for a beautiful inspirational quote so this week inspirebot says a free thinker will always be a free thinker. Think about that. Hmm. So do you consider yourself a free thinker 
Lexi, yeah. Marie? Yeah, I definitely do. Uh, I think of lots of different things. Okay. Just to put it simply. <laughs> <laughs> I think very freely on every subject you can imagine. Oh. I'm a comedian and I've been through a lot. And then I think of a lot of like funny random things. And there's so many times I can't even begin to explain where I'm just like sitting there and I'll think of something and I'll start laughing. Or, you know, I'll just come up with like a good idea or like, I don't know. That's pretty great. A lot of different things or random subjects. My Google history on search is terrible. You definitely don't want to read that. Oh, man. So many random things. I was looking through and laughing at it because I was trying to like think of funny like jokes. And I was like, I wonder what's in my Google history. Like that just like popped up. And I went and I looked through. I'm like, man, I look like a crazy slash random autistic i mean artistic person <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's probably what the fbi has you classified under yeah like yep, crazy artistic autistic person yeah beautiful well I, <laughs> I mean deep down i think there's some sort of inspirational quote in that itself yeah um if you put yourself walk a mile in someone else's search history and yeah. you will understand that yeah. we're all just nuts. Yeah. We're all yeah. nuts. I'm sure there's people who is way worse than mine. Oh, yeah. I feel like, and I, I work on the computer every day. And so I'm sure some of my terms was like, uh, is Corey short for coriander? And Google's like, what the fuck? Why do I have to bring results up for this? But yeah. you know what? It does it anyway, because Google <laughs> knows that it can't just serve itself. So. Yeah. I Definitely. think we should take a page from Google's search results. Definitely. Maybe the next time I come on, we can both uh, write down our, our Google search histories and we can discuss We can discuss you that. You know what? That might be a good idea. That would be and, funny, um, I think. I think. Or I think, maybe you could do it with someone else. I mean, you don't have to do it with me per se, but well, I think that would be a good idea. It was I your idea. So I think it would, yeah, that would be pretty good. Yeah. I like that. Google history. <laughs> No. So what's been in your Google history the past few months? Let's pull that up. You know what? We could do <laughs> next live show. We will have, we will do Google histories and then the people will have to guess whose Google history it oh, was. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Yeah, I like that too. That's, or maybe we could just have a third, a second guest because there is an empty chair over here. Yeah, you can have like the interviewer. The contestants. Kiss contestants. Contestants. See, I'm <laughs> I'm not Spanish. I'm French. That's what yeah. it is. You know. I'm French. I'm black, French, and Italian, so I'm on the same boat. Aren't you Italian as well? I am. Okay. Yes. I remember hearing you say that in, in an episode or two. Yes. Um. Half Italian, half poor, half Brazilian, and then half. Ja um. I'm sorry, not half. Half Italian, quarter Brazilian, and then a quarter Japanese. Mm. Wow, you're Japanese too? Not at all. Nope. No. Oh. I'm just, it's I'm just say, the I know. That that's what it is. I've yeah. got like you got the last the top samurai. Knot, you feel like Luke Kane over here or something. Feeling like Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai, yeah. except alive. But yeah, you know, it's, I feel, I, I'm very much white, but I am Italian. So that's the one I strongly identify with. Yeah, because they're more like yellow toned behind the white. They are, yes. There's a little bit of olive oil like that golden. seeps in the skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I want to, I mean, under the sun, I will definitely turn red, but there's like a mm. slight instant where it's olive skin. And, yeah. I look. and then after like a day or two, then you're just dark. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. And my, and my, my hair gets kissed ever so gently by the sun. Yeah. It's wonderful. Does it get like little pieces of red in it? No, it doesn't. Mine it's blonde. Does, mine does. Well, not anymore because I color it, but. Oh, okay. I get. But it used to. Red beard. Red beard. Maybe I was part pirate. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, that's right. so I came out of the, Came out of the womb like that. Arr! Arr! That'd be funny. <laughs> oh God. Yes. Well, we're gonna dive into the questions. We've got a okay. couple here. This first one is from Reddit. It's found by our friend Andy. Thank you, Andy. It says, "My mom found a pigeon that had fallen onto the road. Its wing is injured, and she put it in a box. What do we do with it? We saw the pigeon struggling to fly, hit itself on the electrical wires, and then it fell on the road." It's now here in a box. What do I do? I say you put together a beautiful uh, little commencement for a Wait, commencement? Funeral. So it's going to give a speech like well, Will Ferrell? Yeah, like a commencement slash, well, 
just to honor its life. Have oh. a little funeral, bury it, you know, circle the grave with rocks, maybe put a little little flowers on it. it oh, it's still alive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was dead. Oh, man. We're going to Terry Shibo sounded, this pigeon. That sounded like it got hurt pretty bad, like it died. Oh, gotcha. I mean, it looked, yeah, it sounded like it got hurt pretty bad, but it's still alive. Oh. So maybe there's some All redemption. Right, then I guess scratch the funeral service and replace it with uh, taking it to a bird rescue, I guess. You Are there really bird rescues? It. Yeah. I mean, if it's a pigeon, you may just need to like put it in front of your car and run it over just because it's... Make it look like an accident. Oh, no. no. I ran over this pigeon. Oh, my gosh. Oh, darn. Yeah. Do people, do they adopt rescue birds as well? Is it like, yeah, they, I know there's places here for sure that have like bird or all over the U S that have bird sanctuaries and people can bring birds or like mostly injured birds, I'm assuming. And they like, you know, frolic. Them. Yeah. Do, frolic around. But do people adopt them? So they're like, well, it actually rescued me. And then maybe, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a bird expert. No, oh, you but. sound like an aviary <laughs> expert from the way that you were Actually, talking about it. <laughs> in a most vehicular sense. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Is that a taste of Gertrude? Yeah. Is that Gertrude? Oh. No, that wasn't. Oh. It sounds different. How many Gertrude nerds? is like this. This is my Gertrude Anderson voice. You've got a wide palette of nerd speak, and I I laud that. Thank it's you. very good. Yeah, I had two brothers, so. Two nerdy brothers. Well, one nerdy brother. The other one's in prison, so. Oh, shit. Do you do a good prison impression? Uh, no, I can make a mean shank, though. <laughs> oh, lovely. My brother made a bunch of uh, weapons before he we went to prison, so. He, had, he ended up figuring out how to make, like, a, I think they're called bowing knives. They're knives that shoot, basically. Like, you, you pull a button or press a button, and it shoots the knife out at you. Oh, my God. I guess God. they're illegal in the u.s but my brother was making them and selling them wow that is that is crazy it's pretty did crazy he, did well we are recording this we'll talk offline if you got one or not <laughs> and if i can get one but that is amazing yeah it's super cool i could throw ninja stars too oh my god i'm really good at it i would hate for that to accidentally go off yeah i was just cleaning my knife and then Right. Yeah, man. I w if a burglar comes in, I have a gun, but I'm definitely going for the ninja stars first. They'd be like, "Oh my god!" Uh, yeah, I would be terrified. I, was... I would just run if I were a burglar. If I, I yeah, that. if you don't see anything and a ninja star just whizzes right past you, oh, I'd be out of there. I'd yeah. piss my pants and then I would run. I'd be like this chick is a fucking ninja. I wish, <laughs> I feel like I need a defense plan for if somebody breaks in to make it seem like I'm a ninja. Yeah. Maybe I should just decorate everything with Japanese decor and regalia. Yeah. Get to use some koi fish. Oh, a nice man. pond, like in your entryway. Oh, that would be badass. Like a little bridge. Some sushi rolls just mm -hmm. decorated a yeah, little pathway. I saw some cherry blossom trees. Oh, that would I be so I love those, so though. Cool. They're beautiful. That, that actually awesome. is a good idea, whether you make... Your house look like a ninja house or not. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> Throughout my ninja house planning, the cherry blossoms, I feel like they'll be really cool for two weeks. And then after that. Yeah, the upkeep. Yeah. So. Plus, I don't even know if, if this is the right weather to for them to be able to survive. I heard it's not. I heard. I know. I think the weather here is probably a lot different than Japan. Yes, that's, that's what I've heard. But, you know, maybe I could get fake ones. So it could True. just be like. Like, prime it, you know? Yeah, just give it like the, you know, the crab with a K for fake crab, just like chaiwi blossoms with chai a W. Chaiwi blossoms. Yeah, these are my chaiwi chai blossoms. blossoms. <laughs> Wait, are you saying it weird? No, no, chaiwi blossoms. Chaiwi blossoms. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Chaiwi blossoms. <laughs> yeah. Come check That's out funny. my chaiwi blossoms outside. It's amazing. All right, well. My sweet cherry blossoms. We're going to move on to the next segment. This is positive spin. So cool. what this is about is I'm going to throw a negative scenario at you. Okay. And you're going to think of some positives for it. Because okay. a lot of times when bad things happen to us, we think of the negative and we're not able to resolve that problem. So I'm trying to train our minds to start thinking of the positives. Okay. And that way we can resolve and get over our obstacles. All right. I'm ready for it. All right. So <clears throat> you get to travel back in time in this scenario. 
Okay. What's your favorite decade? The 90s. Oh, what's your favorite decade that you haven't lived in? <laughs> I would say the probably the 60s. Okay, 60s. So you travel back. I would I get some 60s vibes with the the um is it tie-dye or no, it's not tie-dye. Yeah, it's it a, is tie-dye. Okay. It's a Jimmy, a Jimmy Hendrix shirt. Oh, J H. Purple okay. haze because my hair is purple. Nice. It was punny. Mm-hmm. Not, well, that's great. Eh. You, you just got <laughs> sentenced to go back to the sixties. Okay. And you can't come back. You're stuck there forever. Oh, wow. Can I bring my daughter, or is she just abandoned? Um, you get the option if you want to bring her. You can. I'll bring her. Okay, so you can get to bring your daughter. What's her name? Scarlet. Oh, okay, Scarlet. Well, so you get to bring your little cherry blossom and you guys go to the 60s and you're stuck there forever. Mm-hmm. What are some positives? Well, I'll have access to uh, more options for my glasses because I love these. I have them in five different colors. But obviously, if I lived in the time era, there's way more, I'm sure, to choose from. So that's cool. I can wear like the cool clothes, you know, with like the corsets and the weird like updos and stuff. Wait, the corsets? Do they wear corsets in the 60s? Yeah. Oh, I thought that was like Victorian era. Kind of. It's The 60s, they dressed like that too. I mean, they weren't as big, Grandiose. I guess. Okay. Yeah, it's not like they were going to Grand Balls Monday to Friday. With the blushed cheeks and the yeah. wigs and the little mole. Yeah. Although Marilyn were, Monroe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but she's a different story. But I just think True. that that whole because I'm really into fashion. I I like that time era. Okay. And also, I don't know. You would just have less to worry about. I think than I, we do now. Yeah, I feel like there. I feel like meditation is so big now, and mm-hmm. mindfulness is so big. And mm-hmm. I I'm a tater. I definitely tate. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we need it so much because we go. From zero to a hundred on yeah. everything. Yeah. Everything. It's like work. We're going hard. We've got Slack and Messenger and email and all this stuff just mm-hmm. hitting us, pummeling us yeah. with messages and communications. We've got uh, our mailboxes were overflowing, but now it's our inboxes are overflowing. So we're getting mm-hmm. messages from brands and companies trying to sell us stuff. Our friends texting us. It's exhausting. And then we're like, I need some serious downtime. So then we've got. Nobel Prize strains of weed to just calm us down to get us off the jitters. Yeah. And now uh, it's legal. Right and now it's legal. That's right. And we have meditation and all this stuff. So it's like, whoa. And I forgot to talk about the coffee. So we get caffeinated up to yeah. just rev it up. Then we go down with the meditation and marijuana. And I feel yeah. like maybe in the 60s, although there was quite a bit of marijuana use, not saying that's bad, by the way. But they didn't have to worry about those texts from their friends. Or they didn't have to yeah. worry about the emails. Something. Social media. Right. Which exactly. is why a lot of teenagers these days commit suicide because of embarrassment and hazing online and stuff. Right. Exactly. You know, so you wouldn't have to worry about all that. But news wouldn't spread as fast either. That's true. But yeah. So that also communities are tighter. So maybe it still would. Anyways, they had town haulers. That's true. Town hall, town haulers. That's yeah. right. Yep. Holler. And Holler. Here's, here's the town news. I think you're right. Maybe news wouldn't spread as fast, but maybe that's not a bad thing. Yeah. You know? Maybe it's, I don't need to know it that quickly. Yeah, exactly. As it's happening. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't need to know that Army Hammer is a cannibal. Maybe and I drinks didn't blood. need to watch that video. Yes, exactly. That I, live video stream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I think it could have been a better time. I feel like yeah. you came up with some positives. So you passed the test and we will Thank continue you. the podcast without yeah. pushing you down into the dungeon. So right. great job. Last question. And then we're finished with the podcast. This one is from Reddit from a fan, Courtney. Thank you, Courtney. It says puppy ate my shoe. A family I babysit for has a puppy that's maybe eight months old. I love that dog. Oh. He took a chunk out of my shoe today, though, and I'm not the happiest. I don't mind dirt or even pee but I can't fix a missing chunk of the tongue of my shoe. I'm not sure how to address this. It wasn't a brand new shoe, so it doesn't feel right asking for full price for a replacement, but they were boots and not the cheapest, and it wasn't in my budget to buy a new pair just yet. Advice? Hmm. I think what I would probably do, that was, that was awesome. I need to do that every episode. Just crush it up. That's awesome. You should. Thank you. You should. 
But I think what I would do is I would just obviously tell them what the dog did. Right. And, um, you know, see if they offer to want to, to you know, it. give me some kind of comp. I, what's the word? I can't think of it. Compensation. Right now. Yeah, compensation. That's what I was gonna say, but I'm like, I don't. I'm not. I'm not quite sure that's the right condensation? word. Is that condensation. Is that the right word? Condensation, <laughs> like on my cup. <laughs> no, but maybe see if they offer it, and then I guess if not, I probably would just be like, whatever. Really? That's just, just me, though. Go with that chewed tongue. Just keep. I just want to wear them anymore. I have a bunch of shoes. I just oh, got these. They have my name on them. Pretty. Wait, what does it say on the side? Lexi D in this B. Oh my yeah. God. Oh, that That's makes me jealous. My flip flops don't have shit on them. I need to put like Steph in this heifer. Yeah. I don't know. That just sounds Just order gross. some vinyl decals on, online. Oh, okay. Link in the show notes for all of you guys that want a good deal, 15% off affiliates. So um, anyway, what were we talking about? The shoes. So you would yeah. just, you would ask them like, hey, and yeah, I'd I just think- just be like, hey, your dog, your dog bit a chunk out of my boots, you know, and you're- off the tongue and it just kind of ruined them. You just say it like that and see like what they would say. Yeah. And if they didn't offer anything, then I just would leave it alone. I might just be like, hey, your kid bit the shit out of my shoe. Because that way. Where's my money, bitch? Exactly. Because <laughs> the dog, like, oh, you know, dogs do that. You should have put your shoes away. But if the kid did it, yeah, I feel like you told them a little coriander took a nibble out of your tongue. <laughs> then they might be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. There might be some ramifications for him. But that's Maybe. not really what's important. What's important is those new boots. Because those boots, yeah. you got to look fly. Yeah, definitely. You got to stay fly all the time yeah you could also maybe you could take this opportunity to do some diy where you can customize your tongue so that you can have a maybe you could put like a cherry blossom right there on the tongue that would be cute yeah if you're a girl or a guy whatever it'd be cute if your guy just own it man definitely i think you as a male should not have to limit yourself to if you want flowers on your shoes or not Exactly. Fuck it. Just blossom. Yeah. You are a blossoming human being. So if Chewy you want blossoms to, are beautiful. Yes. You are a sweet, juicy chewy and you need to blossom. So yeah. that's what I feel for everybody, men and women. Don't be afraid. You're all flowers. Yeah. Flowers. Flowers. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I think you could also, you know what? Maybe just what are the parents' size shoes? Take a pair. True. They won't miss them. If they can afford a babysitter, yeah. they probably got a lot of shoes. Yeah, so maybe just ask them, like I said, and then if they don't offer, just steal a pair of their shoes. There you go. Uh, so unless they are Lexi D. Marie and they actually put their name on the shoes, <laughs> that might be a problem. Yeah. But you if you can get your name put on them still. Oh, yeah. Just scribble afterwards. over it. Yeah. Okay. Get like a little this. paintbrush. Do calligraphy on it. Oh my God! Get that quill out, dip it in the yeah. ink. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's another good thing about the six season. You can, I can write with a calligraphy pen. You could just write in general. I feel like I don't do that anymore. Yeah, I actually do. I I'm really uh, geriatric when it comes to notes. I I love writing them because it's something about writing it down that makes me remember it more. Oh, gotcha. Okay, nice. Geriatric. I like yeah. that. Is that what Jerry is short for? I'm not yeah. sure. But I think... <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, geriatric. That's funny. This is... Uh, maybe I should do a name podcast. Etymology yeah. of names. Analogy of names. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be amazing. There's a lot of interesting names out there we can discuss. Oh, man. And some of them are just on the tip of my tongue if they weren't bitten off by a dog. Yeah. But... That I was think... a good one. Thank you. Thank you. I was kicking it around with my my metaphorical shoe (laughs) going back to the shoe i feel like we've given you a lot of it's kind of a shoe in by at this point because we've given a lot of solutions the only other thing i can think of is uh just leave the shoes there just leave them there behind and let them understand the pain that's or give it to the dog maybe like what your quote of will ferrell saying just realize you're not going to appreciate yourself until you appreciate everyone mm-hmm. and are good are doing good things for them mm-hmm. shaking and baking up their lives definitely so i feel like if you shake and bake up the puppy's life 
I feel like that's a good deed. Yeah. Give and them if a you're toy. not first, you're last. That's right. That's right. And so obviously your shoes are last, so you're going to have to give them to the dog. But I feel like you're going to have them, obviously. Yes. And then maybe they'll see them and be like, oh, these aren't our shoes. Whose shoes are these? Oh, this must be so-and-so's. Oh, did our dog just take a bite out of their shoe? Oh, I feel really bad about that. And that's so. And then you don't even have to say anything. I love how uh, the exclamations of those parents. <laughs> oh, those aren't even our shoes. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my gosh, my parents were like that. Oh, Stefan, it's time for dinner. Oh, we yeah. got lasagna. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they use lots of hand gestures, as you can tell, I'm Italian too. I was going to say, yeah, that's pretty Italian. That's yeah. pretty normal now that I'm saying it. That is my mom. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Stefan, what are you doing? Get over here. So great. All right. Well, Mama Mia, we have reached the end of the podcast. So, first off, Lexi, just wanted to say thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun. I oh. Think we covered a lot of. A lot of different things, a lot of different topics and fun things. We had a lot of laughs, which is always good. That's right. We did. We had a lot a lot of sweet things, a lot of spices mm -hmm. on the rack. And uh, I feel like it was a hearty meal of an episode. Definitely. I feel full, satisfied, and ready to go to bed, practically. I it's do concur. 7 o'clock. So, yeah, past my bedtime. But where can people find you? What have you got going on? What, have you, what would you like to plug? Um, well, I do have a show coming up on Mother's Day. It's called a Momity Show. It's oh, <laughs> right. Um, I love it. And love it's it. all female comedians that are moms that will be performing. And that's nice. at 7 p.m. Desert Rose um, Pub and Grill. And then I have another show at JP's Comedy Club nice. um, in Gilbert. And that one is on the 14th, Friday the 14th. So that'll be fun also. Nice. You can find those on my pages on Facebook or Instagram, Lexi D. Marie. So just L-E-X-I-D-E-E-M-A-R-I-E. -E -E. That's amazing. And that's all going to be in the show notes. So you guys don't even have to spell. You know how easy I'm making it? You can't, you don't have to write anymore. And now you don't even have to spell because you just, all you need is a fat thumb to just go on and click bat, bat, the bat. link in the show notes. So that's it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lexi. Listeners, thank you, my little Chaley Blossoms. Love you guys so much. And we'll talk at you next week. See you later. See you later, alligator. <laughs> oh, my God.